Oh, hi guys. Oh, oh, my back hurts. Hi, welcome back to the next episode of the GT6 restoration on the Rusty Beauties channel. And I don't know how long it's been since I posted a video about the engine. For you, it might be a few weeks or months. For me, it is the same day when I stripped the head in the last video. So my plan 10 minutes ago was that I was going to stop posting videos about the engine of, GT of the GT6 because I wanted to finish the TR4 engine. So you tell me whether I finished the TR4 engine before I post this video. So you see, you're in the future, you know stuff that I don't. So what I'm doing now is I'm on the GT6 engine again. Um, I still haven't ordered the parts because I just, like I said, I just finished disassembling the head. So tonight I'm gonna sit down and make a list. Now that I'm still in the garage, I decided to keep going here, clean up some parts, clean up the head. The head is already cleaned up. I'm not gonna paint it yet because the plan is to get uh, valve seats, hardened valve seats and new valves and take it to a machine shop so they can install them for me. So I'm going to paint it after that. But I cleaned it up so it is nice and clean for them. And just so I can see if there's any cracks visually. They're going to magniflex it there, but I could see visually if there are any cracks and whether it's worth taking it to machine shop or not. So, oh, wow, that's interesting. Okay, let me show you something here. <laughs> Do you see what I see here? <laughs> what the heck is that? Like, really? Looks like there is another one. Is there another one there? No, that was just <laughs> the shell from this one. Wow. Well, what was that doing there? Or maybe there is another one. Yep, look at that. Huh, what the heck is that? I have the feeling that was one piece. Yeah. What the heck is that? I'm sure that's there from the factory. <laughs> I don't think this uh, water pump has ever been out of this engine. That's crazy. That's really crazy. Anyway, what else can I find there? Now that makes me worry that I'm going to find other things inside. What can that be? Like, is it a tool? Anyways, whatever. Well, it's a few days later and I haven't done much progress since it was holidays. It was uh, Christmas, New Year's, kids were home and it was just, <laughs> it wasn't possible to work on the GT6. I worked a little bit more with Nick on the Miata during those holidays. So the GT6 again was put to the side, but uh, like I said, I'm determined to finish it this year. So uh, anyways, it's not Thursday today, it's Tuesday, but I've been working on the TR4, as you may know, and uh, I'm pretty stuck there. I'm waiting for parts, again, for the same reason, because of the holidays. Uh, all the parts that I ordered, including the parts for the GT6, they are stuck here and there on customs. Normally I get them for within a week. Now it is more than two weeks and I still don't have them. So anyways, so since I'm stuck with the TR4, everything that I could do there without parts is done. I can do a little bit of work on the GT6 now and compensate for the last two Thursdays that I was supposed to work on it and I didn't. However, I don't want to clean parts, you know, I'm tired of that. I've done that on the TR4 lately and it's like, phew, I'm sick and tired of that. Another reason why I don't want to work on the engine is because I can't post it soon. Like I said before, since I'm working on the TR4 engine, I'm posting videos about that. 
I don't want to confuse people with two engine rebuilds at the same time. That's why my idea was to work on both engines, but post only the videos about the TR4 and leave these for late. But maybe it's a better idea now that I have something else to do to put the engine to the side and work on it later when I can film it and post it right away. So what I think I'm going to do, I got myself a Christmas present. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. And uh, I think we're going to work on that. So for this reason, I'm going to have to clean up because whatever we're going to work on today is on the frame. So we have to get rid of all this, put it in bins maybe. We're going to work on it later. So let me clean up first. Let me prepare everything. And then I'm going to show you the surprise. All right. So I was able to move some stuff around. I moved that car that way and uh, all the engine parts I was able to fit into this container, believe it or not. So now we have access to the entire frame here and specifically to the rear end, as you may have guessed that that's what we need to work on. But as promised, let's see what's in the mysterious package. Yeah, it came from Rimmers Bros. So Maybe you can guess what it is. Oh, there's staples. I hate those big staples. Anyway, so there's, there's parts for more than one car here. It's not only for me. It's also for a friend, for Eugene. So these are for Eugene. So Eugene bought a GT6 and he's working on it. So this is for his car. He also got transition pieces. And this is for him as well. So let me take these away. Get them out of the way. Don't pick, okay? Oh. So, like I said, we're opening Christmas gifts here. That's my Christmas gift from myself to myself. Tan tan tan! CV joint conversion kit for my Rotoflex rear suspension. So, we're gonna unpack them later, but yeah. I'm not gonna tell you how much it is because my girlfriend is watching those videos. You can go and look them up on the Rimmers Bros website. The part number is RG1314. <laughs> the truth is she doesn't watch, but anyways, I'm not gonna say how much they are. Uh, okay, so now that we know what this is, let's talk about the rear suspension a little bit. So, as you may know, on uh, Mark 1 and Mark 2, GT6, the rear axle doesn't have these donuts. And, and on Mark III, for whatever reason, they decided to introduce these rubber donuts here that are like a really weak spot for these cars. Actually, let me interrupt myself here because I came to the Most Motors website and it looks like Mark I and Mark III from KF20000 have a suspension without the Rotoflex and Mark II and Mark III to KF20000 have, have the Rotoflex, which means initially they started with a suspension without the Rotoflex, they introduced it in Mark II and halfway through Mark III they decided, well, you know what, just kidding, let's go back to the suspension without the Rotoflex. But this is what it looks like, you can see it. The Rotoflex donut is what makes the connection between the differential and the stub axle. So uh, this CV conversion kit is available to replace the drive shaft or axle, whatever you want to call it. And that saves you troubles with this because I've heard stories about people get stranded on the road because their donut is gone or Rotoflex as they call it. These ones, when uh, Keith gave me this car, this one was already installed, I believe, I don't remember, and this one came in a package, it was brand new. So normally they come with this band around them to hold them compressed while you mount them, and then you take the band out. I don't know how this one came off, but it doesn't really matter because now they're going out. And even though this is a brand new one, it is more than 30 years, so now it is 35 years old. So this rubber, I don't trust it anymore. At some point I was looking to buy brand new ones to replace them, even though these were never used probably. But then I thought, well, it's Christmas, maybe I should make myself this gift. So anyways, we're gonna replace those with the CV 
joint conversion kit. However, that's not going to be in this video because before that we need to take care of the differential. I put it here temporarily because I believe this was the last job that I started doing before I uh, stopped working for, on this car for more than three years. I started cleaning the differential to replace the seals, check the bearings and everything, and then paint it and put it permanently on the car. The leaf spring, I believe, was taken care of by Keith when he took the car apart originally. So these I just put temporarily so I can put the car in one piece and bring it from my workplace where I used to work to home. So now we're going to have to take these apart, take care of the differential, then we're going to mount it back and then we're going to do the conversion kit, which is going to be in the next video, I guess. Also a little bit of history here on the rear suspension. We assembled it with uh, Chef Tash about four years ago, but I didn't take care of the end flow of the hub. And this is like a complicated procedure apparently. I didn't know anything about it. We started torquing the hubs. It says that they need to be torqued to 110 pounds and then they became super tight. And then I did a little bit of research and I found out that there's uh, spacers and shims inside that need to be measured, tolerances need to be uh, followed, etc, etc. So with the conversion kit we still have to do that, there's no way around that. So I have to do a little bit more research on that because it's a complicated procedure and there's no videos about it. I looked, I couldn't find any videos, so it looks like we're gonna have a video about that at some point maybe the next one. So in this video we're gonna take the spring out which is not a very easy procedure again because it's under tension now and if we undo these bolts it's gonna go boom. So we're gonna have to figure out how to loosen it safely. So without further ado let's get crackalacking. Let's give a little bit of life to this video. We're halfway through the video and we haven't done any work yet. <laughs> All right I put a jack under the differential because you can imagine that the weight of the car without the jack there is on this plate here because of course the frame is pushing down on the wheels the wheels are trying to go up and as they're going up they're pushing this spring up with them together right so the weight is here so now if we loosen these bolts everything is gonna jump up but in the meantime also the body or the frame is gonna fall down because there's not going to be anything to hold it anymore. That's why we have the support under the differential now, but still we can't loosen the spring. We have to hold the tension somehow, we have to hold it down. There are many ways to do that, people make special tools and whatever. I have a special tool too, but I think I'm going to use the special tool 2x because I believe that's the easiest way. You don't know the special tool 2x4? Well, some of you may know it as two by four better. <laughs> All right, so my idea is to somehow tie it down here, let's say, maybe this direction because it's gonna be, oops, sorry, because it has more strength like this. Just tie it around the frame, like here, to hold it down with maybe a ratchet strap, and then press on that end, and then loosen the bolts, and then loosen gradually that end. I believe that's gonna work. All right, so here's my contraption. So this end is wrapped nicely down and after that I push that end down and I wrapped it with another ratchet strap. So I believe it is now safe to undo these six bolts here and then gently loosen that ratchet strap and let go of it. Let's see if that's gonna work or it's gonna hit me in the face. Okay, now the plate is loose. So now the special 2, 2x4 is holding it. <laughs> Let's see now this part. Yeah, it's not gonna jump on me. I can actually unhook it. 
Okay, now gently. Uh, it wasn't that scary, <laughs> was it? But there's a lot of tension. Let me show you now. Yeah, try to do that without the two X four. Won't work. Anyway, the scary part is done. Now we can take it apart safely. And that is how you convert your GT6 into a spaceship. <laughs> All right, so um, it's been drained nicely. Now it's been cleaned once. I started cleaning it before in my workplace, but it sat for a long time and it obviously got messed up again, so. Okay, you're right, it's gonna fall. All right, so in 10 minutes, we're gonna come and spray it with this uh, duplicolor engine and ammo. So we have it painted, so we will let the paint dry overnight and tomorrow morning we're going to replace the three seals and then we can put it back in the car and start dealing with the CV axles, which I'm excited about. All right, so it's the next day and let's start taking it apart. So we're going to remove here the two output shafts and the flange from the pinion and we're gonna paint them separately and we're gonna change the seals and maybe the bearings here. I have the bearings for everywhere, so we might as well change them. So these two, I'm gonna mark them. They are the same, but it's a good idea to put them back where they came from. So this is gonna be, this is our left one. And this is our right one. They come off from here. You see this, I just tried what fits there. I have a 316 Allen key or hex, but it is pretty loose there. I figured, I don't know, let me try, but I think five millimeters works better. It's just literally um, 20 tau more than 316, but yeah, this doesn't feel very safe. I don't, I don't want to round the hole, so five millimeters works better there. It fits nice and tight. You can tap it gently and it fits nicely. Um, so you see here, let me show you, the flange has two rounded sides. So when you align it like this, you can put the socket. The other option is through this hole, but it comes on an angle. So I don't like this. This is better. Now, um, if you haven't seen it, Steve Denton has a beautiful video on rebuilding a Spitfire differential. So he took it to a shop which specializes in that. It's called Pete Cox, if I'm not wrong, in the UK somewhere. Uh, don't ask me where. So they rebuilt the differential together, Steve and the guy in the shop. And they have a video that shows the whole process. Now here we're not rebuilding it, we're just changing the seals, but if you think that you need to rebuild yours, that might be a good video. I'll put a link here and in the description. 
So you see, maybe this one was rounded already, because now here, 5 millimeter doesn't fit very well. Let me try with 3 sixteenths. Yeah, here 3 sixteenths fits well. So maybe this screw was already worn, the hex on the screw was already worn, I don't know. Yeah, 3 sixteenths works well everywhere, but if your screws are a little bit worn, you can use 5 millimeters and it's going to be better. Okay, let's see how easy it's going to be to take this out now. There you go. And the whole shaft comes out with the bearing and inside here, wow, and inside here is also the seal on this plate. So I'm going to compare my bearings that I have to make sure that I have them before I start taking this out because I might damage this one as I'm taking it out and I want to make sure that I have the correct one to replace it. Okay, let's take the other one as well, so we can clean them and paint them at the same time, you know. Here, by the way, you have this cotter pin in this hole, which needs to be movable. This is the breeder, this is where the differential breeds from, because when it when the oil warms up, it expands and it's going to create too much pressure inside and it's going to start shooting oil through the seals and even through the gasket and everywhere. So that's why it has a breather here, so it doesn't build up pressure inside. Sometimes it happens that this hole gets plugged and that's when you start seeing more leaks on your differential. is going to be more stubborn. I'm going to use the back of this hammer, which is aluminum. And there you go. And the other one is out as well. So yeah, both sides of the bearings are not bad, but we're going to replace them anyway. And look at the oil. There. Okay, and last but not least, let's take this flange out. So here, this nut, as far as I know, I've never rebuilt a differential, so don't quote me on that, but I believe we have spacers here on the pinion, and that the spacer determine the preload or the end play. So here we have specific torque that we have to go to on this nut, but it, the nut is not determining the end play, which means that uh, we can take it out safely and put it back, but still I'm going to mark it. Okay, I'm going to mark two, just in case, like that. The, the end of the nut is pretty much flush with the end of the boat, so I don't need to count the turns as long as we put it at the same height and in the same orientation we should be fine so let's take this out it's my left hand so not very good with it but okay oh it's painted red the other option is to count the turns, but try to count them. <laughs> Did you count them? <laughs> so this flange, yeah, I was going to say should come easy, and it did. So that's it. This is the pinion seal here, so we're going to have to replace that. But first of all, let's take apart the shafts and paint everything so we can deal with that. 
Here it's important to check the surface because this is where the seal seals and we want it to be nice and polished which it is in the seal area it is nice and polished but we're gonna clean the rest as well and that's it okay let's keep taking apart the shafts now there's a third clip here that we have to take out but like I said first let me check the bearings all right so I wasn't sure what differential I have unfortunately on the most motors website there's not many diagrams for GT6 so I had to go to Spitfire differential which is the same but there's different differentials for Spitfire for early Spitfires and for late Spitfires and I don't know which one I have so of course I bought the bearings and the seals for both differentials to make sure that I have them but also over the years I bought the seals and the bearings and I lost them so then I bought them once again and then I found the first set so now I have yeah so I have two pinion bearings for one differential and two pinion bearings for the other differential so these are for the shafts and these are for the shafts for a different ear and then we have pinion seal for one ear and pinion seal for another ear but this we only have these two seals we only have for one year so what if we don't match them then we're gonna have to buy new ones anyway unless these seals are the same for the early and for the late differentials i don't know when we take them apart we will find out let's measure this pretty sure this is the bearing this is going to be too small or is this the bearing are they the same no this one is bigger so let's first see how much is our old one it's 2 and 51 tau this one is 2 and, 50 and, 2 and 44 less than 2 so looks like this is the one that we need what about the inner okay 868 977 970 so that's what we need alright let's take the circle clip out I was gonna say that was easier than expected and then of course it didn't work So I can put it on the press like that but that's not a good idea because it's gonna be we might bend this this plate is pretty thin so I'm gonna use this whatever it is called <laughs> I don't know what this is called bearing separator they call it that's what it says on the packaging Make sure that we are right between the bearing and the plate. I don't know what gives. Like I keep tightening, but I don't see anything moving. Probably the bows on the bearings are giving. <laughs> ah, it's becoming too tight. And I'm afraid that's gonna skip and hit me in the face, all these bows. Wow. Now that it's under tension, I'm gonna try to hit it gently here yeah. 
So that's the problem that we're pulling on the outer race of the bearing, but we're trying to remove the inner race from there. So all the tension now is going through the bearings, through the bow bearings inside. That's interesting. If, if I heat it with the torch, eh, how is that going to help? We're going to heat the shaft as well. Maybe I should go put it on the press like that now and see something is going to give. We're either going to break the bearing or we're going to make it come out. If we break it, we're going to continue dealing with the inner race. Wow. Okay, let's see what's going to happen here. That's way too much tension already. Something is going to break. No. Too much tension. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Let's try with this then. So. I don't want to mushroom the end of this, so I'm going to use a lead hammer and I'm going to tap it gently a few times. Now it's under like a great tension here, so hopefully something's going to give and hopefully that's going to be the bearing, <laughs> not something else, you know. I'm staying away. might have moved, you know. No, I don't think so. I tried to be nice with you, you know, but it was, it was your choice. Don't tell me it was from the heat. We actually cracked it here in this cut. So let's see how this surface is. Ooh, nice. Sometimes this surface here where the seal rides is like really damaged, like it's corroded actually, but this one is good. Nice, I'm gonna paint this black now. Let me take out the other one gonna paint this black too. Let me see if I have the seal now. <laughs> so this is the seal that I have. So the outer diameter is the same. The inner diameter must fit here. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, baby. That's what we need. Okay, so we have the seal. We have the bearings, we have the seal, we have everything. Problem is here now. We damage this surface a little bit, you see. So we're gonna have to file it a little bit with the file. And that's gonna be it. So, okay, how do you take this bearing out? Okay, let's take the seal out as well. And then I'm gonna do the other one on my own. That's an interesting seal. Never seen one like that with metal on both sides. Doesn't matter. Okay, let me file this a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna clean it first and then we're gonna file it. Okay, I'm gonna do the other one without you here. All right, so all these parts are cleaned. I degreased them. I did a little bit of a repair on one of these. On the late, I cleaned it up a little bit. I'll show you later and now they're primered and once they're dry 
I'm gonna spray them with black. I think I'm gonna do them black. Yeah, because the drive shaft is gonna be black and the two half shafts end with a black piece. So I'm gonna make these black as well. And uh, in the meantime, let's see if we can take this seal out from here, which is gonna be tricky, but we will do our best. Of course, we're gonna be optimistic first and we're gonna try doing it this way. I don't think it's gonna work, but I have to try. Nope. So let's try with, with a trick that somebody showed me before. Remember the trick with the screw? So if we run a screw close to the edge, that the end of the screw is gonna hit the race of the bearing, but we have to be at the end, not towards the bearing because we're gonna ruin the bearing otherwise. And eventually it's gonna pull the seal out, let's see. Unless we break the screw in. <laughs> but at least now we can use this screw and grab it with something. And that's also what somebody told me in the comments that that's what they did. They, they run a screw and then they held it with one of these hammers and pulled it out. Except I can't now the pliers are oh, okay. Nope. There you go. <laughs> the screw didn't even poke on the other side of the seal. All right, so here again, I bought the two pinion seals. Turns out I need the bigger one. This is for earlier Spitfire, I guess, so... And then let's see if we can tap it in with the hammer. Well, the paint is still a little bit tacky, but I can't wait anymore. Time is flying, you know. I want to finish this today, put it on the car, and then uh, post the video tomorrow. I'm gonna put some oil here too. There's the washer, and then the nut. Now with the nut we're gonna have to play with to put it in the same place where it used to be. Okay, I believe we are there. There used to be a time when I could see, you know. Now I don't see, even with glasses. <laughs> All right, this one is done. Let's do the two sides now. So the seal goes here. Oh, this is, by the way, where I fixed the surface a little bit and on the lathe so I got rid of the burr it's not the best <laughs> unfortunately I dented it but what seals I believe is here the surface on the side and that's not damaged that's good uh, and also here we're gonna put gasket maker on this surface there's no gasket here they don't give you gaskets for here so we're just gonna put gasket maker here and here and hopefully it's gonna hold if it doesn't well it's gonna remind me it's my car you know so it's gonna remind me that i did something stupid here 
because for the second one I went straight with the angle grinder <laughs> and that's what I'm going to do from now onward. Anyway, so that's the inner part that goes to the bearing, which means our seal needs to go in like that because the open part of the seal goes towards the oil. Just making sure it's going straight, which it is. Okay, so the seal is in. So now we shouldn't forget this. First we put this plate, which goes like this. Let me put some lubrication here actually. Just gonna put very little grease on the seal, but I'm gonna put also here on the bearing surface, I'm gonna put grease so we can slide it, hopefully not too hard. And even on the inner race of the bearing, we can put this on the shaft like this and now we can drive the bearing in can i use this can't believe i still have this this is from my jeep yeah that presses on the inner bearing on the inner race so here we can put a socket or something Well, it's moving because we lubricated it, you know? Lubrication is everything. That's what she said. Here it's still turning, so we're not pushing on the outer race or the bows. Actually went very easy. And we go all the way until it hits the shoulder. So now we should be able to turn the bearing and the uh, thing without any issues, you see? All right. And here you can see that this side is not a straight line, it's a little bit curved. And here this plate is the same, it has one of these curved sides. So that's how it goes. But before we install it, we're gonna put some gasket maker here because like I said, there's no, um, there's no gasket here. They don't give you a gasket for here. Okay, so our curved side is on the top. Here it's on the top. And now it should go in easily. Match the splines inside. We can tap it gently, so we can push the bearing in place. Put the bolts back, clean them up a little bit. See, to put them on, you have to turn the curved side on this, of this flange there. I don't know what the torque here is, but I can imagine that for this size of boat, it can be more than 20. Which is even before the first click of my calibrated elbow. And then we can do the other side. Alright, so we're ready to install it on the car, but I just wanted to point something here. So you see the mounting hardware here, you have a bush on top, like rubber bush. Then you have a rubber bush at the bottom of the bracket here. Then you have a washer, and then you have another washer, and then you have a nut. So why do we have two washers here? 
Well, let's look at this one. So this one is our regular washer, like a fender washer, I think they call them, like with a big shoulder so it can support our lower rubber bushing. The other one, unfortunately, there's no picture on most motors and because it's not available, but look what it says, left hand side only. I don't know what it looks like, but I'm just assuming that it is a thicker and heavier duty washer. And it's only on the left side because of how the torque from the engine comes here. So we are spinning clockwise here. So the drive shaft is spinning clockwise and it's trying to push this arm down and this arm up. So this heavy duty washer is not needed on the right side, but it's needed on the left side to support this arm. I guess that's the reason why. Unfortunately, I don't have this washer and I went through this hardware, which is a leftover hardware from all the boxes that uh, Keith gave me when he gave me the car. So I put everything together and then I started picking through it and taking only the bolts that I needed for the suspension and everything that I assembled so far. And I went through this leftover hardware here and I didn't find anything that looks like a heavier duty washer or something. These are the biggest washers I find, but I think these are from the Tronions or I don't know. So I decided I'm just gonna use two of these washers instead of that heavy duty washer. So we are ready here. These are the upper bushings that go like this. They won't stay, so I just keep them on the side and then we have the lower bushing this is the fender washer that goes on both sides and then i decided to use these two as a heavy duty washer to support this so that's how it's gonna be i think it's overkill that heavy duty washer because how much torque there is is it do you think it's gonna bend this washer but anyways i'm gonna do what the, the manual says and for the rear end we have this big boat that goes across here once the differential is in also on the diff on the back of the diff there's bushings that are new on ours they're good so i didn't change them and they go right here so let me go get the diff Now here, the stud that goes down has a shoulder. So you have to tighten all the way to the shoulder. It's calculated enough to uh, compress enough the bushings. So there's, I don't think there's torque here. You just tighten until you hit the shoulder. That's it. All right, so differential serviced and installed. So to be honest, guys, it just occurred to me that this is probably the longest job that I've done in my career, <laughs> probably. I mean, I started servicing this differential at the end of 2018. Like I said, this was the last job that I started on this car before I stole it for three years, three and a half years. And I started cleaning it in order to change the seals and the bearings, but I never finished. So I remember it sat on the floor at my workplace for, I don't know, a year or two before I actually put it away. So anyways, three and a half years later, <laughs> job finished. So 
that's it. What's left here is we, ne we need to still fill it with oil. I'm not sure I have, yeah, I do have it, MT90 by Redline. That's the oil that we're gonna put. GL4, the oil that I prefer for my differential. But I need to order more. I'm gonna make sure that I have enough for the TR4 before I fill this up, but I'm gonna fill it up whenever the time comes. Just remind me so I don't forget. So anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna remove the old axles from here. I hope that I won't need a hub puller because I lost my hub puller. I didn't lose it, I know where it is, but I can't get it back because I landed it to someone probably almost two years now and they never returned it and I lost contact with them because, because we communicated through Messenger on Facebook and as you may know, my Facebook, I lost my account. I had to create a new account, so I don't know even the name of the guy. I don't have a phone number. I can't find my old messages on Messenger because I don't have access to that account anymore. So, hey, if you listen, I need my hub puller. <laughs> Contact me, please. Well, if not, I'm gonna make a new one. It was homemade. I made it myself, so I'm gonna have to make another one, I guess, because we're gonna have to pull the hubs and start from scratch but that's going to be in the next episode so this one we're going to end here so thanks for hanging out with me thanks for commenting for watching for subscribing for sharing for supporting and everything guys that you do for me i really really appreciate it thank you so much if you're wondering how you can support the channel well there's multiple ways if you want to do financial donation you can uh, send me a PayPal transfer to my email elin.yakov.trustybeauties.com or you can go to my Patreon page. There's a link in the description of this video to my Patreon page. So you can go there and you can see there's three different ways there. But that's not necessary if you want to have access to all my content. All my content is free. The financial support is only if you want to say thank you Elin, this is five dollars, go buy yourself a beer or something like that. So once again, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.